Welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast, where you get to choose, change and take action to create a different today and a different future. These are my stories of choice, change and action, along with the phenomenal guests I have on here. From a really young age, I've always desired to create a change in the world. The planet has been a constant inspiration to me and Access Consciousness has shown me the tools to know that anything is possible and I keep choosing. What are you going to choose? Hi everyone, welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast. You are with me, your host, Simone Millicent, and today I have Anthony and Julia, well, Anthony Anthony Mattis and Julia Sotis Mattis is how you go by, right? Yeah. Yep, okay, that's good. right. <laughs> So where where are you guys in the world today? We're home. We're home. We're in South Carolina, United States. Do you know, I've always wanted to go to South Carolina. I've always wanted to go to South Carolina, like Memphis, like, all, and everyone looks at me and goes, really? And I'm like, uh-huh. Like, <laughs> we're no, going to the deep south. Yeah. It's like beautiful yeah. and romantic and cozy. And it's like kind of a Christmas storybook. Like, I yeah. just love it. We're by the sea. So come anytime. Right. Okay. Know. Well, yeah. Bedroom. Okay. I didn't, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't realize that. All right. So, and if you are joining us on Spotify or listening to us, you can always flip over to YouTube because then you get to see us in my, my fancy French hat. So I don't have to do my hair. And also Julia is wearing a t-shirt that I just sent her saying success is just a choice. And it truly is. And that is a perfect, actually, um, we might even call that the name of the podcast. Cause what I want to talk mm-hmm. to you guys about. So they don't really know exactly what I wanted to talk to them about today. I know they 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 get it along the lines of business, but here's what showed up for me is well, Anthony has been resisting business for a very long time with Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, uh, you know, <laughs> getting getting um quite vocal and uh terse with him and saying, you know what, you've got to look at this if you want to actually create a successful business. And so eventually he came up to me and goes, right, okay, I'm done. When's your next business done different class? And it wasn't for quite some time. And he was like, okay, I'll buy one, you know, and he's been listening to it. Okay. And I'm going to ask you about it, but here's the piece that I went, wow, is Julia, who is one of my online hosts for my next business done different class that's in August. And actually, I think by the time this goes live, it'll be within a week that we're starting. Uh, And she said to me, oh, you should have seen Anthony when he was listening to the class. He was like, he had to sleep. He was passing out. Like he felt sick. There's all this stuff going on. And she goes, that's probably going to happen to me. And I went, you do realize you could just come to the other side, right? You could actually <laughs> just have enjoy a business, you know, like that. This, And I realized though, and thank you so much for saying that, Julia, because I realized, gosh, that is so many people's points of view about business. That, that it's going to be exhausting, it's going to be tiring, I'm probably going to get sick, I'm probably, you know, all the resistance rather than actually just choosing the joy of it. So that's why I went, oh, I want to have you both on here and talk about this and see if maybe, just maybe, just maybe we could get even 1% of the people who are listening to come over to the other side, come out of the dark side of business and come over to the joy of business. So that's why I wanted you guys to come on here. And I'd like to ask you, first of all, uh, I know that your point of view about business is changing and maybe start with you, Anthony. It's like, what was going on for you for so long when Gary kept pinging you and, and you know, nudging you to say, Hey, oi, you need to look at this. Well, I, I, well, I thought I had done enough, like, you know, and so, and, and I had a strong point of view that if I deliver a great product, then my business will be successful but I didn't realize how many points of view, you talk a lot about this in the Joy of Business book too, but I didn't realize how many points of view I had around where I was avoiding having a multi-million dollar business because I didn't believe that I can handle counting the money, so to speak, doing the bookkeeping, even though I have other people to do it. The idea of that felt very overwhelming for me. So there was definitely like a built-in internal sabotage thing and you use that that example of the fleas the the fleas with the uh the lid and they and even when you they remove the lid the fleas would never jump beyond the the box that they were in because they're used to having that lid and that's exactly how uh I've been functioning from like like the fleas that have been in the box and so 
So I actually looked at, it. I sat down with Julie. I'm like, because I'm very dyslexic, numbers are painful for me. And I said, can you please just help me to go through? Because I would just function from the gist of it. Like I always knew energetically when something was off, but I never knew why. Which is great though, too. Like that, I, I'm not, yeah, let's, let's say that all of this is actually included as well, because I, I think knowing the numbers, but I also think going from the gist of it energetically is, is a really, is a powerful choice to make as well. Yeah. Uh, but, but actually sitting down with Julia, because she's really good at like, uh, you know, breaking down the numbers and getting me to look at certain stuff. And, and what was good about that for me is I got to see that number one, things weren't as bad as I thought they were. <laughs> and number two, where maybe I may be spending money in areas that maybe I shouldn't and where I could maybe redirect it. So, but I was really, there was so much judgment attached mm. to it. I also went deep into COVID land uh, the last year and two years before so much. So between COVID land and trying to control my son's life, <laughs> I was destroying my business. <laughs> <laughs> so that was part of it. And I thought I had done enough when it came to business yeah. stuff. I really did. So yeah. So block. So I just want to actually, thing. yeah, I want to go through a couple of things <laughs> here that you said, because one is you referred to a story that I have in, in the book joy of business. And I'll just quickly like tell that story. They did this, uh, uh tests like you know a long time ago with these jumping fleas and what they do is they put these fleas in a glass box so of course they can't jump further than the roof right the glass ceiling as they say like you know you've got this glass ceiling and you won't go beyond that and then they take the glass ceiling off and the fleas only jump to that same height rather than we have the capacity and the ability to jump out of that box we actually don't have a glass ceiling the only person in the world who creates a glass ceiling for you is you so mm -hmm. Right now, when you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, Simone's the weirdo and I get more where Anthony's coming from, everything that that is and everywhere that you've decided that you are overwhelmed or you have something like dyslexia, something that you've decided means you cannot be great in business and you cannot be successful. Will you please destroy and uncreate it, times a gazillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. So there's something I also, you said you were overwhelmed, right? And that is something that I see a lot of people go to. They go, oh, I'm too overwhelmed. And can you, what is that for you when you said that? Well, again, what, what, what I've come to realize is this me being, uh, I bought the point of view that in order to have a multi-million dollar business, there were going to be too many players involved and I wouldn't be able to control all of them, I think is what, where I was functioning from. Because in my business, I always had two people, one back end person, and then the one who was sort of like the creative person, right? And so things started to change. And I wasn't asking my business questions. I stopped. I was functioning on automatic pilot, right? And so when those two people, original people that were part of my business sort of like left, I tried to create that same model moving forward. Mm. And the business was asking for something totally different. And then when I had a new gaggle member or staff member or team member, she's like, what if we had five people working in this business? And I'm like, but then I wouldn't know what was going on. So I started freaking out. <laughs> You're yeah. more of a control freak than me, Anthony. By oh my sound. God. <laughs> well, and I was like, I felt overwhelmed at first. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, and I got myself to get out of that point of view. And then but something else, this is just, this stuff is just like recently hitting me. Like within, I'm talking like the last week or two. And with this whole avoiding and defending stuff, I, and receiving, I realized that I wasn't willing to receive people who really want to be a contribution to my life mm -hmm. and the business. And so I would hire people that were extremely dysfunctional, that actually maintained a lot of the insanities in which I functioned from. And I was like, okay, so shit. yeah, so so let me just walk this through also for people who've yeah. never done access consciousness listening to the podcast and they're like what avoiding defending yes. receiving oh um, sorry <laughs> no 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 that's okay but but please feel free to talk about any of the tools and also run a process whatever you want because people have been listening to my podcast know that anything goes and if you want to check out the access consciousness clearing statement you can go to theclearingstatement.com and find out more about it so it's interesting as you sort of when i asked you the question about overwhelm what I see that you got to, which is so familiar for so many people, is you go, oh, I'm overwhelmed when you can't control. Yes. So if you're listening to this and you go, and that is familiar to you, it's 
like everywhere that because overwhelm is sort of like this reason and justification to go oh well I don't have to do anything because I'm overwhelmed you know I don't know pour myself a drink have a nap you know take some time off because I'm overwhelmed well is it that you're overwhelmed or is it that you just cannot control anything anymore and you are about to enter into this place that is so out of control and instills chaos which actually allows more possibilities to show up so, and as, you know, Anthony mentioned, it's like, if you're avoiding the possibilities and it's like, you're defending why you shouldn't be receiving them, then mm -hmm. can you actually have a more successful business? Can you have a greater business? So everything at that is everywhere that you're functioning from this overwhelm so that you can try and keep controlling, we destroy and uncreate it. We're right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, COVIDs and beyonds. And I love that you also mentioned about trying to control your kid. I mean, anyone who has kids goes, yeah, good luck with that. It's yeah. like, you, know, you can give it your best shot. It's like trying to control a kitten. You can't. Look at your business like a kitten. You cannot. <laughs> what you can do is listen and you can hear. And you can hear those, like literally the whispers of when your business is going, hey, over here, we need more people. We need something different. Right. So, Julia... And it's like, what is business being like? How did you grow up with business? What was business like for you? Um, very, very, I think a very anxiety, very anxiety ridden place. Um, my dad was a farmer and so he always wanted to farm and he loved doing it, but it was this like sort of grinding his teeth, like anxiety 24 seven. And when he retired a few years ago, I was like, his like this like wonderful happy personality came out and I was like well, where was that and it's like oh under like mounds and mounds and mounds of anxiety all the time controlling the weather controlling you know the um the the bugs controlling the world economy grain prices equipment breaking down like it's just basically endless and so for me, but I, one of the great things my, both my parents did and my mom, when I was five years old, started a costume business and she would get too emotionally attached to the costumes to sell them. So she would rent them and she had 7,000 and she's going to sell it. This wow. 7,000. Yeah. It's like, really cool. Actually. I should 7, send you costumes. That's and amazing. It's, it's housed in the loft of their barn that was built in 1922. I'll send you like a video. It's pretty okay. cool. Yeah. So anyways, but so they were both entrepreneurs and they, so they never had bosses. They never went to work for anybody else. They always, you know, got to do what they wanted to do. And my dad's thing was always discipline, 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 discipline. And he had lists and he wasn't like other farmers. He was very disciplined. Um, and successful and successful very fun yeah very and he successful. became very financially successful so so there was you know for me business was has always been something very exciting something that I could do on my own but also there was just I what I've been realizing lately doing just really trying to buckle down with business is that I have a lot of really weird twisted convoluted points of view about business and and recently only recently I'm like I do need to get on team joy of business and like whatever it takes whatever I have to do I need to switch teams from being just it's like this and and it hasn't always been I've had major successes but it's always been sort of this how did that happen kind of accidental thing mm -hmm. kind of going through all these like just weird weird points of view about things about relationship what does that mean for business marriage you know what does it mean when you have kids what does the weather mean like all these factors that cause anxiety basically and so it's like I've been really working to like get rid of just points of view it's just points of view it's just crazy stuff that I've bought and so um yeah I'm really excited about just getting myself sorted basically <laughs> so I love the way you describe this too and if you guys haven't like if you're listening and you can't see Julia she's like she's being very Italian basically is the way I would describe it using her hands a lot and it's all very dramatic but here's the piece that I get if so many people make it really dramatic so they don't have to as Anthony mentioned before receive a different possibility I mean I love that you've had success and then you go well how did that happen and it's like 
No, I mean, and everybody has an area of their life that they find quite easy. As an example, I don't know, maybe you find cooking really easy, you know? And so you're cooking and you're cooking something and you're not following a recipe, but you're like tasting it and going, mm, what else can I add? Oh yeah, I'll add this and this and this. And you maybe never ever cook the same thing twice because you're just like following the energy and following the moment. But you don't sit there and go, hey, you know, I cooked this really great meal. You enjoy it, you receive it. And it's a, it's a possibility, but it becomes natural. And it's like, what if business was actually something that was really natural to us? And we didn't have to, um, you know, you don't have to have a degree. I mean, of course, if you're going to be a heart surgeon or something, maybe I'm hoping you've gone to college and learned something, you know, so, but you don't have to have a degree to be successful in business. It's like, all you have to have is this, this drive to keep choosing what it is that you know and and have this like generative energy where you know so many people have that where they're just like oh this 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 and it shows up and then being in question about well, what else is possible with this so yeah. I want to talk about one tool and then ask you guys another question is if you're listening to this and you have a business you have an idea you have projects you have whatever is going on this tool you can use absolutely every single day is destroy and uncreate your relationship with the business, mm. which means Anthony getting out of control. It means like, you know, not controlling it, et cetera. So destroy and uncreate your relationship with your business, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. And I want, I would like you, Julie, because you, the way you talked about this with all the anxiety and all these different points of view, but I know you have the tools. I know you use access consciousness tools. So what is one of your favorite tools that you've used with that? Mm. Well, one that, I mean, this is, can I talk about plagiarization? Is that too sure. advanced? Can I break it down? Sure. I mean, I, I, uh, a couple months ago, I went, well, actually I took your choice of possibilities. And, and you got me to see that I'm about as serious about money as a heart attack. <laughs> and I love like money. Class. Pardon? But you like money. Do I, well, I thought I hated it. Do you I mean, want we, do you like things that money brings you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm a princess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. There's different do. forms. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> From there, so the plagiarization. You say so you bought yeah. it up. Yeah. So, so I so I did that class with you, and I went, "Gosh, damn! I am serious as a heart attack about this. This is not that serious of an area. I'm like, snap out of it." And so then I started doing um, thirty days of clearing. I like to do the clearings out loud because I find it's really strong. And so I did a um, hundred times a day clearing the hatred of money and then I finished that and so much changed it was so awesome and then I I asked Gary for another clearing I said what would be another good one to do a hundred times per day and he said do what how much of my life have I plagiarized and who's animating it so I I I think I'm on like day 20 of that and that's been amazing because plagiarizing is basically when you are taking somebody else's life the story of their life and stealing it their their material and playing it off as though it's your own so and, and what you're also doing though is making all their limitations yours so basically with the oh, plagiarization yes. a really simple way to look at that is anytime you're going to the wrongness of you and you're functioning from the limitations it's you, you're plagiarizing the lightness of you is you what you know is you and it's like but all of that stuff all of that stuff, like when you go to the rightness, all of it is actually plagiarizing. Julie, can you do me a favor? Can you, because I know people are going to listen to this and go, what hatred thing? Can you run that process and then run the second process for us, please? The plagiarizing ones? The first one you said, like okay. the hatred So one. the first one was um, how many, okay, so it's get your, you might need to pause this guys because it's wordy. But the first one was how many emotional COVIDs and how many literal COVIDs am I using to create the hatred of money I am choosing? Revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy and uncreate that times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pox, shorts, boys, COVIDs and beyonds. And the second one is how much of my life have I plagiarized and who is animating it? And everything that is times a godzillion, 
will you destroy and uncreate it all? And if you're running it on yourself, you say, will I destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine pod, pox, shorts, boys, povids, and beyonds. So those have been extremely effective for me personally. Basically the access consciousness um, clearing statement and the processes are freaking amazing. And I know it's free of our life so much. And it's like, I know it can sound really weird and you're like, what? what the hell is that? You know, do I stop this? It's like, you know what, is your life working for you as it currently is? Or would you like to change something? And I know Anthony and Julia have both changed a lot and I've definitely changed a lot as well. So it's like, you know, what if you tried something different? Um, can you also give a little brief description of the animating part with that? With that yeah, person? well, for me, I'm actually still exploring what he means by that second half of the clearing. And which is kind of a cool part of the clearing is it keeps you sort of searching and in question about and things show up. But basically animating is when you are making something come to life. That's the the short version is you're making like a zombie come to life. Like how many people do you guys have in your life who, you know, maybe you don't fit with, maybe they're not as energetic or as as fast or as you know seeking of possibilities and happiness as you are but you keep them in your life um and you animate them you know you bring zombies to life you know and people do this in all kinds of ways it's not just with people um and it it's just something that takes a whole lot of energy and is kind of like investing your money into a black hole investing your energy in a black hole and and not to like, you know, give you a little sneak preview into this if you're if you're still getting downloaded, but the way I see that process as well is who are you depending on that's actually bringing you to life each day? Like who do you go, oh, I need this person in my life yeah. because they make me come alive. And it's like with that animating part rather than what if you get to choose what your life looks like every single day, which is a lot more, I guess, confronting. And yet in in the short run and the long run and you know life is a marathon it's like it's way more freeing for you if you're not actually relying on others to animate you and to you know prop you up as you say so yeah so thank you um anthony i want can you talk a little bit about that because you mentioned about the avoiding and defending and receiving with business so what is what's some of the tools you've been using with that and how did that come up and tell us a story well you know well, this again, there's all the, these new clearings with the whole uh, points of view or of avoiding and defending. I feel like it's been able to like go to a much, much deeper level and extract yeah. a lot of the insane points of view we mm-hmm. have because there's been some things I haven't been able to get to. Right. And, and then all of a sudden this whole like, what are you avoiding with, you know, uh, you know, having a multi-million dollar business of consciousness what are you defending with regards to having a multi-million dollar business of consciousness and something you said in your book again the joy of business is like you maybe didn't say it exactly in this way but it was something along the lines of like the people who <laughs> the people who are working for you like you may want to like find out what their points of view about money are <laughs> and so i that inspired me and i decided to like have a meeting and and I, i'm like and, and I had the team there, there was five of them. And I'm like, guys, I just want you to just say whatever comes to your mind. And I'm like, what are you all uh, avoiding with regards to working with and for a multi-million dollar business of consciousness? Mm. And we, we did, we, we spent two hours and I got to see my insane stuff. And what I had got to for me is receiving people on my team or gaggle that actually does really desire to contribute to me. And I'm like, whoa. And what I got to see, like some of them hate money. Mm. (laughs) And I was like, and that's kind of like what you talked about in your book. Like if they hate money, they may do things in your business that fucks up money flows. You know what I mean? And I'm like, so I don't know. It was really cool. And it got them to see, and they were just super grateful and the level of vulnerability. And, and I, what I got was like, they're either going to go away, which is great. It's fine. It's okay. And I said, that's okay, guys. Or they're going to step up. Mm-hmm. And, but we're all of it. And I said, guys, I'm facilitating myself through this process. So it got, it just got me to look at like those spaces that were beyond me trying to figure out what was wrong. Right. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I was like, I just need more people in my classes and then all my problems will go away. That's kind of where I was functioning from. Which means I just need like you need the money so that you can pay this and da da da. And it never, ever works. Well, in access consciousness. Yeah. 21 years of working. And it's like 
every single time I see a facilitator that comes along that either wants to be A, a guru, or B, make it about the money, never works. It may work for a really short period of time and then it just collapses because it's like yeah. universe, consciousness has our back and isn't going, yeah. hey, you know, tell me how amazing you are. It's like, it doesn't work like that. So I love that you actually spent that time with your staff though and, and looked at that and were willing for them to have anything show up. And I think, I'm not so sure if I refer to it in my book or not, but there was years ago I was in Paris and we were, had a class coming up and, you know, and this is a way you can look at it with your business. Okay, guys, is, is it congruent with what you're asking? Like in the staff, et cetera. Cause one of the things I, I was like, what is this? Cause it just had this energy. Like we were hitting our head against a brick wall or opening a door and then it was being slammed shut. And I went, okay. So I sat down with everyone. And I went, how many people do you guys think you could get to this class? And yeah. one said 10, one said 70, and one said, I haven't even thought about it. And I went, oh, and I was like, okay, there we go. There's a huge discrepancy with the way everyone was coming in. And you don't need to have the same point of view. And what would it, what would it take to sort of have that contribution of everyone and being able to um, allow something different to show up? And then asking questions about that, about, you know, because I know one person was like, I don't think I can handle more than 10 at registration. And I was like, we would hire somebody else. So when you come across all these different things that's showing up, it's like, well, what if we, there's another possibility. There's another, you know, we can jump over that hurdle. We can jump over the next hurdle. We can even jump over the next hurdle. And it's like looking at where you think there's a problem and there's not. Mm -hmm. And another, um, another short story is, one of the shops that we own in Brisbane, it's an antique shop. Years ago, there was this fabulous guy, so sweet, like so kind and so, you know, just awesome. Took amazing photos of the stock and amazing videos of the stock. But one of the things we realized was like he was, you know, on the ground in the shop, his point of view about the cost of things, like he was like, why would you pay you know, over $10,000 for a dining room table. I mean, these exquisite dining room table from Italy and blah, 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 you know, but his point of view is that's too expensive. Why would you have a piece of jewelry that you wore that was even over $500, you know, and which was, it came a bit of a problem because we have a hell of a lot of jewelry in that, that store that is a lot of money and is absolutely <laughs> stunning and beautiful. So we looked at it and we went, oh, and it's like, can you change someone's point of view no. Can you invite them to a different possibility? Yes. You cannot be vested in the outcome of that. So what we ended up doing was what you would call like Peter Principle, which Peter Principle is a book and it is an amazing book. And this guy talks about how to sort of move somebody over to a different um, place where they're used more. So we had him ended up doing all the photos and the videos and everything for the website. But he wasn't actually dealing with the customers one-on-one -on -one with, you know, in his world going, I can't believe you're looking at a $15,000 dining room table. That's insane, you know, in his head whilst they're looking at it. And they pick up on those thoughts. So I think it's a really brilliant place to start that if you're listening to this is gather the people that you work with and ask them what their point of view is. Like Anthony said too, it's not like you're, you know, you're going to hold it against them or get them in trouble, but ask them the question, do you actually like money? Because some yeah. people don't have money, but they like it. And it's like, or like, as we did, we talked about with Julia before, it's like, you know, she likes what money brings to her, but she likes to be the princess and have it delivered. Like, here you go, Julia. <laughs> and you can change any point of view that you have, and you can change your point of view that you have by using the access consciousness clearing statement as well. And even just asking yourself, okay, what's my point of view about my business today? What's my point of view about money today? What am I avoiding with money? What am I avoiding with business? And then you can just say pock and pod or everything in a daddy's times a godzillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod, online, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds, which the proverbs is what you are avoiding and defending. It's like so friggin' powerful and potent. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. So guys, can you tell me, like you sort of got a little bit of like where, where you were, where you are. What are you looking forward to with business? Mm -hmm. What next? That's a great question. Right. Yeah, yeah well, and not from answer, like just from like what next? No, well, well, it's it's like really like being excited about not functioning from the form and structure of it, and actually really, really leaping off the cliff. And as Gary Douglas says, the founder of Access, it's like it's like creating uh, on quicksand. You know, yeah. and um, and really being in the question every moment, every 10 seconds, 
and and not going to like those projections expectations the fear of like what if i don't have enough the next class but really being in the the every 10 seconds and it does require a huge level of vulnerability and uh and not run and avoid the whole business thing like i'm putting i'm making a demand to not run from it anymore to actually really look at it and dive in no matter how much it feels like it's hurting my brain with certain mm-hmm. stuff like like I, we did, we, we, right. And, and we did it together. And I was like, you know what, that wasn't so bad after all. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just, <laughs> oh, oh man, I don't know. I, it's not one thing. <coughs> Simone. It's just, it's just, I don't know. To, to me, that's problem. like that relaxation and the possibilities of what business can bring to you. It's, it's, yeah. it's that and open up the receiving because I see how like you are with receiving and when you talk about like when you, when you see you get excited about just the maybe the jewelry you buy or the different investments and you know what i don't know just it, it is just really cool and i'm like cool like there's there's something about that there's like a knowing in your universe with business that i would like to to know right and 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 to have show up in my life and so i'm looking forward to that yeah you're just chill about it cool thank you and yeah i am just chill about it and when you say a knowing, I would say it's not knowing from like, I have the answer. It's one of the areas of my life that I've just always like, well, I don't know what next, what next, what next, what next? Like, let's, let's play here. And, you know, I was talking to Dane the other day, Dane here, who's the co-creator of Access Consciousness. And I was saying how so many people have a point of view that business is, you know, if you come into business, it has to be smooth sailing. And I think a lot of people don't choose it because they start a business and then they come across something that's quote unquote, not smooth sailing. And they go, "Eh, I'm not good at this. And then they run a million miles rather than go, it's not smooth sailing. There's a hell of a lot of stuff that shows up, but but it's not like it, it, that's not relevant. It's like, how are you going to deal with it? Like, to me, that's part of the adventure. It's like, Oh, it just changed. The business just changed. You know, something else showed up. What other possibilities are available? Julie is yawning, by the way, now. So she's I think bored. that's there's <laughs> stuff coming off. <laughs> and I'm wide awake. You know, finally. <laughs> yay! You know, what, you yay. Know what just changed for me? And this was a bit of a shock this morning. And it reminded me of you. You were working with doing real estate, and one of your real estate guys, I don't know if I should tell this story publicly. You can you fill in? Is it okay? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sorry. He like went to jail or something. One of the guys. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that's fine. Um, no, I started a business. Uh, yeah, and uh, there was three guys and myself, and the whole idea was to flip houses, right? Which I've wanted to do for a long time. I'm not exactly going to pick up the hammer, but I had the finances, right? And these three, yeah. and I really loved the idea. I was like, yay! Finally, this is happening. Now that's two years ago, I think. Maybe two years ago, eighteen months ago, and it we was still a while have- ago. Yeah. yeah, we haven't started anything, but I was in Houston, Texas. And, and then I got a call from one of them and they went, don't freak out, but this guy's in jail. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but I was like, how are we going to deal with this? And because we had to get papers signed, everything to get him off as a director and all of this stuff. So, but to me, I, I always go, oh, I haven't dealt with this before. Like, let's go. And I still, we yeah. still have this company and there's only three of us now. And we were just talking about it on the weekend. We still haven't done anything yet, but I was like, well, is it actually time? Like with what's going on with the COVID crazy shit and, you know, all of that and Queensland where we live, like it's just packed here. Everyone went, decided to move to Queensland. So it's really not the time to do that. So it's like, let's just have the company sitting there and we'll know when something shows up. We'll know when something shows up that is going to be a greater possibility. You don't, just because you choose something doesn't mean you have to run down that road and keep up with it give it the space is what i would say so that company still exists but we've given it space and gone okay show us when you would like us to play with you so yeah yeah Yeah. so i this morning i had a big change in business something just totally my editor died like a couple days ago of my book and i was just like whoa and she was such a sweet lady i didn't i never met her but she did such a good job on my book and she just died and i'm like well, what am I going to do now? And it was just such a, a change in, in twists and, and then it, it could get into a whole talk to the entities thing and stuff like that. But I was, it was just like, it was just like, wow, like things change and you never know yeah. what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, no. you like she's gone. And so <laughs> many people will go, Oh, that's the end of my book because she was doing it. No. What if it's just the beginning? Yeah. Right. What if your book actually required something different? Right. 
Yeah. yeah. So. And that was the thing about in your book too, where it's like when something wasn't working, there was always this willingness with you. For, you never like stopped. You, you never threw the cards. You would always like just go to question. There was always still an energy behind the movement of the business, even if when you had to change tracks. And that was really cool to see, to see that. Like you didn't allow the lulls or the valleys in the business to slow you down. You, you would just plug in the tools to actually keep it moving in yeah. one direction or another without having the point of view. So it sort of just reminded me of how to use the tools more, not just for the problems of my life, but actually also in business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. And, 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 going. and literally just starting with that question of like, what else is truly possible? Like what else yeah. is possible with this? What else is possible? There's always another possibility available. When you think you've like hit a brick wall, and everyone else is slammed into the brick wall and you're like, see, we've all hit the brick wall. You're all bleeding and there's guts everywhere. I don't know what yeah. you want to say. It's like, there's always another possibility. Always, every right. single time. Yeah. And so, I noticed that with you, I noticed that with Dane and Gary, you guys just keep moving. Yeah. It's like you're going on a run and you don't stop. Yep. Catch us if you can. Keep going. <laughs> So, hey, you guys, we are at the end of the podcast. So I want to say thank you so much for joining me here today. I actually have uh, a business on different showing up. I think it's, like I said, by the time this launches in a few days. So check it out on simonemillisses.com forward slash BDD. There's also go to accessjoybusiness.com. There is a lot of joy business facilitators who are so phenomenal all around the world. And they are doing these classes, Business Done Different, and also Access Business and Money. And they're absolutely fabulous. If it's something that you're resisting, can I just give you a little word of advice? It's like, if it's something you're resisting, it's usually going to change the most for you. So what if instead of resisting it and avoiding it and defending why you don't do something like this, run straight on, head in and just go, you know what? I'm done. I'm trying to control. Let's go. So find a, a Business Done Different class near you. Um, Julia, if you're on YouTube, you can have a look and Julia is going to hold the book up again. To, I will as well. Joy Business. Get Joy Business. You can get on Amazon. It's translated into 16 different languages. Yeah. Uh, it's also on Audible. Like I think I've read What's this that? book like four times. I just love this book. I've Thank just you. I've gotten so much out of it. I just had to say Thank that. you. You know, I did an interview not long ago and she was asking, she was a really good interviewer and the questions she asked me. And by the end of it, I went, this is actually a really good book. And I was like, God, it took me a long time to get that. It's actually a good book, you know. <laughs> so it is. And there's a lot of great, fabulous tools in there. And Julia and Anthony, if people want to find out more about your businesses, where can they find you? Yeah. So my website is juliasotas.com, J-U-L-I-A-S-O-T-A-S.com. And I'm on the Access Consciousness site as well. If you search my name, I have all my classes. Yeah, these guys are both certified facilitators, but I didn't say that at the beginning. So accessconsciousness.com, you can find them there. We'll have everything in the show notes as well. And Anthony? Cool. You can find me at dranthonymattis.com, dranthonymattis.com, and on the Access Consciousness website. Dance by the doctor, because he's important. He's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining me here today. I am truly incredibly grateful for both of you and so many, like all the access consciousness facilitators in the world. Like, wow, yeah. how did we get so lucky to be using these tools and, and traveling around the world or doing classes online and doing all of that? It's just like, yeah, more of that, please. Really? Totally. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I can't thank wait you. to... I can't wait to play with you on Business Done Different coming up next Me month. too. Like coming to the other side, changing the script. Let's do joy business. Right? Yeah, Let's go. go to the <laughs> other team. Play for the other team. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye, Simone. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure to hit the follow or subscribe button on your favorite listening platform to get notified of new episodes. We read all the reviews, so if there's any topic you would like to hear about, let us know. If you'd like to know more about the tools, information, and classes mentioned in the podcast, head on over to simonemillises.com and follow me on Instagram at simonemillises or the podcast has its very own link on Instagram at choice, change, and action. Don't forget, you can download the show notes. And lastly, have way too much fun today. <laughs>